White Gold of Pakistan Jammu and Kashmir, India. Welcome to our YouTube channel The Finest Forever. On the 9th of February, India's Ministry of Mines made an announcement that encouraged some people to invite Elon Musk to the country. They announced that in the Rizi district of Jammu and Kashmir, almost 6 million tons of lithium was found. The thing is, lithium is considered to be white gold. From the battery in your smartphone, to the electric vehicles, everything that uses lithium-ion batteries drives up the demand for lithium. Today, it has become a highly valuable natural resource. According to one estimate, if you look at the global lithium reserves, the country with the highest reserves, is Chile at number one, with 9.2 million ton reserves. Followed by Australia, second, at 5.7 million tons. Does this mean that now India has the second largest reserves of lithium? Does this mean that the nation has hit a lottery? Similar to how the Gulf countries became rich due to oil reserves, can India become rich due to the lithium reserves? In this video, let's try to answer all such questions. India has announced its first significant discovery of reserves of lithium. A rare mineral, crucial for manufacturing of electric vehicles, in JNK's Rizi district, for the first time, India has found 5.9 million tons of lithium reserves. Lithium batteries in tube baggage which goes into the hold. Lithium reserve has been discovered. Let's clear up one thing. There's no uncertainty that lithium is an extremely valuable metal. All smartphones, irrespective of the brand, your phone has either a lithium ion battery or lithium polymer battery. Additionally, any electric vehicle that is manufactured today, by any company, almost every one of them has a lithium battery. This is because in comparison to the other types of batteries, such as lead acid batteries, the lifespan of lithium batteries is almost 10 times longer. They weigh about 50% 60% lighter and have higher efficiency. So much so that for storing renewable energy, power grids are also using lithium batteries. In India, almost 88 billion rupees worth of lithium batteries and 1 rupee. 7 billion worth of lithium metal was imported from other countries in 2020-21. And the global lithium market, its total value in 2021 was 600 billion rupees. It is projected that by 2028, its value would cross 1.3 trillion rupees. As people move away from petrol and diesel vehicles, towards electric vehicles, as solar and wind energy are used more, replacing coal power plants, we will see a growth in lithium demand. The lithium reserves discovered in J&K, have been categorized as inferred resources. Resources whose quantity and quality can be estimated. But we cannot say for sure the quantity of lithium reserves actually present here, or the quality of the lithium, or whether it will be economically possible to mine it or not, we don't know this. The costs, the environmental impact, we don't know much about these. Look at this graph, on top of inferred resources are the indicated resources. And then measured resources, proven resources, and probable resources. Y-axis represents how much we know about the geological area. And the x-axis represents other factors, such as whether it'll be economically possible to mine or not. The Ecological Survey of India has put it into the G3 category of initial assessment. They've claimed that more research and studies are needed to take it up to the G1 or G2 categories. Once they reach those categories, they can be considered mineable reserves. Only after that, the Ministry of Mines would be able to know the exact tonnage of lithium present. How much of it could be extracted, its quality, but to reach this stage, friends, it can take up to five to seven years, before we can commercially exploit it. Two years ago, in 2021, similar news came from Karnataka, when the government announced that they found 1,600 tons of lithium. Even that was in the inferred category. But in the current news, the quantity of lithium is much higher, and so it is significantly more important. At the beginning of the video, I told you that the largest lithium reserves are in Chile in South America. At 9.2 million tons. Second, in Australia, at 5.7 million tons. Does this mean that India is now in the second spot? Not yet, because the reserve is still in the category of inferred resources. If you compare with this logic, Bolivia has the largest lithium reserves in the category of inferred resources, 21 million tons. 
The global known supply is at 89 million tons. Even so, it means that in India, 5.5% of the global lithium reserves are present. That's a huge number. If the top players in the lithium industry are compared, more than half of the global lithium reserves are in three South American countries. Chile, Argentina, and Bolivia. On the other hand, China is the number one player of producing lithium-ion batteries. Of all the lithium batteries produced worldwide, more than 75% of it are produced in China. According to a recent study by an international energy agency, China controls 58% of the lithium processing globally. In the second spot is Chile at 29%, and Argentina at the third with 10%. In terms of lithium extraction, Australia's share is the highest at 52%, followed by Chile at 22% and China at 13%. It is interesting to note that China has not discovered many lithium reserves, but lithium processing is the highest in China. They have focused so much to develop this industry. Obviously, there's a high environmental cost of lithium mining. Similar to mining for other resources, lithium mining produces water, soil, and air pollution too. The process of extracting lithium from its ore is water-intensive. A lot of water is wasted for this. According to an estimate, to produce one ton of lithium, 2.2 million liters of water is required. The same amount of water in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Second, lithium is often extracted from hard rocks and underground brine reservoirs. This begs the question, will lithium mining increase the chances of incidents like Joshima? We will if the government ignores its environmental impact. Third, what about the air and soil pollution produced by mining? It is true that lithium is being used to manufacture electric vehicles and electric batteries that is reducing the overall carbon emissions. But here, we cannot ignore the carbon emissions from mining. We will have to balance it all. We will have to evaluate the negatives and how we can counter them. In countries like Argentina and Bolivia, people have been protesting the adverse environmental impact. But for a second, if we believe that that the discovered 6 million tons of reserves become proven reserves, and it'll be economically profitable to mine them, it won't have a high adverse environmental impact. And that everything's accounted for, how will this impact the Indian economy and geopolitics? This is the most interesting part. Because if we work with these assumptions, the situation would be very similar to that in the Gulf countries that hit the jackpot when they found oil reserves. It is interesting to see that historically, reactions of various industries and its impact when wholesome natural resources were found in any country. There are several positive examples of this. Apart from the Gulf countries, oil was discovered in Norway, Australia, countries like Botswana and Rwanda, which developed a lot. But at the same time, there are opposite examples too. Countries for whom their natural resources have become a curse. Where the country had to face misfortune because of that. Such as Congo, Bolivia, and Netherlands. The case of the Netherlands is so famous that the phenomenon is named after it. The Dutch disease. What is this Dutch disease? It can also be known as the resource curse. A disease that is seen in countries that have an abundance of natural resources. It might seem like that country should become rich due to the natural resources, but it doesn't happen. In 1977, The Economist magazine used the phrase, the Dutch disease, to explain the case of the Netherlands. Actually, in 1959, large gas reserves were discovered in the Netherlands. They began exporting natural gas, it helped the economy, but about 10 years later, during the period 1970 to 1977, the unemployment rate increased up to 5.1%, which was earlier around 1%. The private sector investment decreased, the economists were confused about what happened. The gas that was found, what that a bane or a curse? Would you agree if I say that the treasure was cursed? The impact can be seen in two ways. First, when the country has high quantities of natural resources and the natural resources are imported to other countries. This means an inflow of foreign investments. If the exports of natural resources are high enticing foreign entities to invest in the country, it leads to an appreciation of the currency's price. In the case of the Netherlands, you can assume that their currency will be stronger. Strengthening of the currency can be considered a good thing. 
but as I explained in the $1 equals 1 rupee video, fluctuations in the currency exchange rates cannot be seen in absolute terms. Some industries benefit from this while others suffer. If the value of our nation's currency increases, people who are exporting other products will suffer. Because everything that is being exported would become expensive. This will impact the other sectors of the country. If you take the example of the Netherlands, they had amazing exports, but the other industries in the country, such as manufacturing industry, exporting manufactured items, will become more costly. The other industries could not sustain their businesses. They had to suffer losses. The second impact of the Dutch disease will be on the labor market. When a country discovers oil or lithium, they will require labor for the mining activities, thus creating jobs in that sector. People will shift from other sectors to this sector. 1020, leaving a damaging impact on other sectors. Overall, the Dutch disease means a country stumbling upon an abundance of natural resources. If the other sectors of the country aren't developed, they wouldn't be able to compete with the sector of the natural resource. And they will face a depression. This was evident in the Netherlands. And in many other countries as well. Additionally, the mining sector isn't very skill intensive. It doesn't need a lot of prior knowledge. People involved in mining do not have to be very educated. So, if there's a sudden shift of jobs to such sectors, this will adversely impact the skill development and knowledge among the masses. And this will impact the long-term growth of the country as well. If we see the example of the Gulf countries, they avoided the Dutch disease easily. Because there were no other sectors. Literally, the Gulf countries would have no economies, had oil reserves not been discovered. The value of their currency was able to appreciate freely without any impact on any other sectors, because these countries weren't exporting anything else. The second example is developed countries like Australia and Norway. A high quantity of resources is found there. These countries avoided the Dutch disease by diversifying masterfully among other sectors. Specifically speaking of Norway, this country was fortunate because their government spent on the education of their citizens. The spent on creating good infrastructure provided a high quality of life to the citizens. They did these before oil was discovered there. Yeah, that's right. The first oil field in Norway was discovered in 1969. By then, there was a strong democratic government in Norway. Their public institutions were very strong. And the economy was already diversified. Countries like Venezuela and Iran were not so fortunate. In 1908, oil was found in Iran. And in 1922, oil was found in Venezuela. In both these countries, the other sectors weren't as developed. Citizens weren't very educated, and the oil attracted all the funds and labor. And the entire economy tries to survive on only one resource. In both countries, the rest of the economy suffered heavy losses. Another sure shot way of avoiding the Dutch disease that was used in Norway is to use the incoming funds from the natural resources for the benefit of the masses. It shouldn't be that only a handful of individuals become billionaires from an inflow of money due to the oil. Instead, each citizen benefits from it. The excess money earned from selling the natural resources should be collected in a fund and that money be used to diversify the economy and for the development of the nation. The Wealth Fund of Norway holds more than $1 trillion. The largest sovereign wealth fund in the world. The excess money is spent on education and infrastructure. The Gulf countries are paying a lot of attention to this lesson.
countries like the UAE and Saudi Arabia, that were once dependent on oil only, today, they are trying to diversify their economies. Today, Dubai has become a tourism hub. Today, 95% of Dubai's GDP is not oil-based, rather it is non-oil. Only 30% of the GDP of the UAE depends on oil and gas. If you consider the developing countries, Botswana and Africa is one of the positive examples of this, which has successfully avoided the Dutch disease. But the negative examples would be countries like Congo and Zimbabwe, where due to corruption and mismanagement, the natural resources have proved to be cursed. In the manufacturing of lithium-ion batteries, cobalt is another important metal that is used. And do you know that in Congo, 74% of the global cobalt supply is produced? Such a large quantity of a valuable resource in one country Congo could have become extremely rich if it wanted to. But today, you'll find Congo at the bottom of nearly all lists. By 2015, numerous mines in Congo were controlled by warlords. They ran a mining mafia. Even today, mining is carried out by children. There is rampant child labor all across the country. The mining destroyed the environment of the country. And the economy did not benefit at all. Overall, the lesson is very clear here. If we do find a treasure trove of natural resources, we should not be dependent on that treasure. We need to use the resource to help the citizens and to diversify the economy of the country. The government should be mindful of things like corruption and mismanagement. Because if there's corruption with the natural resources, it will prove detrimental to the country. Thank you very much. Subscribe to the finest forever.